السلام عليكم let's discuss the closed loop control with feed weakening in the two quadrant DC drive so if we need uh, to control the speed above the base speed uh, we need to reduce the flux because we know that the speed omega is inversely proportional with the flux so if we go to a speed higher than the base speed we need to weaken the flux or we need to enter to a flux control so we need to switch between the armature volts control to the flux control at a certain speed which we'll call a base speed which depends on how much current is allowed in the armature circuit so here if we draw the constant power region and the constant torque region as a function of the speed so if this is omega base under this speed if the speed is than omega base then here we have VA control and if omega is higher than omega base we have the flux control or what we can call the field weakening and if we plot the back MF as a function of omega when the speed is zero the back MF is equal to zero it will rise linearly after that it will be fixed at EA max let's say this is EA max now EA max can be calculated as the voltage in the flux control must be the rated so here we have VA equal VA rated so this would be VA rated minus RA IA now this one I would call it IA max which is how much current is allowed to flow in the armature circuit if this one is the rated then EA will be EA max will be EA max or, or EA rated if this one is twice the rated three times the rated in this case EA max will be less than the rated and omega base will be less than the rated speed and we will switch from the voltage control to the flux control in a speed which is less than the rated speed according to the maximum current allowed inside the, the machine so the thing that will decide when we go uh, between the the voltage control and the the flux control is the back MF this one we need to maintain the back MF constant in the flux region so the first thing we will calculate or estimate the the back MF and this is very straightforward uh, from the voltage equation VA which equal to RA IA plus LA DIA by DT plus EA if we rearrange it then EA will equal VA we can measure VA this is a measurement of VA then we can calculate RA IA plus LA DIA by DT so this is the current multiplied by this operator then we here calculate the induced EMF so this is estimation or calculating for the induced uh, back EMF inside the machine after that we'll compare it to what to a reference uh, back EMF and the reference back EMF here is actually EA max will be so EA star is EA max then we need a voltage control for the induced voltage which is a BI type control with a limiter now if you notice here we have a, a limiter in the minimum value for the current and the maximum value so this will decide uh, IF max and this will decide the IF minimum so all the time 
the field current should be regulated between two of those values. The maximum field current is connected to the rated flux, while the minimum uh, field current is connected to the maximum speed. So this is the omega max. So this is the the reference field current that we will compare it to the actual field current which is measured from the field circuit. After that we have a PI a current control which will give the uh, control signal to the gate pulse circuit that will decide the fairing angle for the, the converter. Now in general we know that LF is very large such that the current inside the field circuit can be assumed continuous under delivery and also the time constant of the field which can be calculated as LF over RF is much much larger than the converter uh, time constant tau R so simply this means that even uh, half wave control rectifier is sufficient let's say to provide a continuous mode of operation for the field circuit which means we can in the field circuit we can use uh, a full wave or a half wave controlled rectifier uh, another comment here that we can add is the estimation of the back MF here it's actually we are differentiating and you know that if I'm differentiating a signal and if this, this signal has a noise, then the differentiation will depend on the rate of the change. So we will amplify uh, the noise in this case. Uh, can we have another solution for this one? Yes, we can do uh, estimation using the concept of the disturbance observer. And uh, this is what I will discuss with you here. So here we will discuss with you how to estimate the back EMF using the concept of the disturbance observer. Uh, so if we uh, recall that the voltage equation is VA which equal to RA IA plus LA DIA by DT plus EA. Now, in term flap last to simplify the thing, this will equal VA minus EA will equal to RA plus LAS or multiply by IA of S. Now, if we need to, to plot this one here, so this is the back MF, let's say EA negative here and here we have the, the plant which represented here by a first order system it's actually RL circuit 1 over uh, LA S plus RA and the output is IA now the idea of the observation or estimation is to calculate unknown signal let's assume the EA is unknown from known signals which is the input and the output the input we have it VA we can measure VA and the output IA we have it we can measure the current inside the armature so the first thing if I'm assuming this one is P of S let's assume the plant a transfer function so someone will say what about if we multiply by the inverse dynamic of this one so what about if we multiply by LAS plus RA? What we will get? Now if we track the signal, the signal here is actually VA minus EA. The signal here is IA. If I multiply it by the inverse of P of S inverse, I will get here the same signal, this one, VA minus EA now someone will say what about if uh, 
I take this signal from here, VA, and add it to here and subtract from it this signal. So this will be VA minus VA plus EA. So here what I'm calculating, here I'm calculating EA. So someone will say, what about if I fit this one here? And this will be the VA. So in this case, this will be what? Let's change the, the color. So now, according to this, this will be VA plus EA. This will be VA, and this will be IA. So simply, this means that now you are canceling the the back math, and you are here calculating the an estimation, or let's say the actual uh, back math. Now, simply this uh, configuration or this block diagram has at least two uh, uh, shortcomings. The first one, this one, is non-proper. We know that any transform function, let's say g of s, consists of n of s over d of s. Now, for the function to be proper, the degree of n of s must be less than or equal the degree of d of s. And simply here is not. This is the first one. The second one is what? Here I'm calculating input on an output is not calculated yet, which means that I will have algebraic loop. I will have algebraic loop that I'm calculating an input according to the output I don't have. So in this case, uh, if I need to simulate this one directly, it will uh, give me an algebraic loop. So how I can solve uh, this problem? Someone will say the first thing I need to realize this transfer function. So I will multiply it by something that will only modify the transient but not modify uh, the steady state. So I will use a low pass filter. So here I will multiply it by omega c over s plus omega c. So here I'm using a filter which is the Q of S which will equal omega C over S plus omega C and omega C is the cutoff frequency. And in order to maintain uh, the signal I will multiply ho also here with the same uh, filter so here I will multiply it by omega c over s plus omega c now this one will become EA estimate which means that if I plot uh, EA and EA estimate as a function of time if I'm assuming that this is the EA then this will be the E hat. Now the transit response here is decided by what? By omega c. Is decided by omega c. Now here I'm having now estimation for the the back MF and I can use it instead of uh, the noisy differentiation. And this is what we call a disturbance observer which is widely used in the uh, motion control. So next, let us discuss the four quadrant uh, three phase control dictifier, DC drive. As we know, if we uh, need to control the machine in the four quadrant, we need uh, two a converters connected in anti uh, parallel configuration 
So if I'm assuming that this is the first converter, which provide uh, the positive current, and this is the second converter, which provide the negative current. If we assume that this is the positive current, I A, and this is here the direction of the negative current, then the first converter and the second converter can provide the first one uh, can support the the machine in the Q1 and uh, Q4 mode, uh, Q1 and Q4 mode of operation, while uh, the second converter can support the machine in Q2 uh, and Q3 mode of operation. So here we have the the two converter, converter one and converter two. If we assume that this is the V1, this will be the the V2. Uh, both are connected in uh, the anti parallel configuration. Uh, now here we need only one converter to be active at a time, and also the two converter will share the same current and the speed uh, control loops. So speed and control loops shared between the both converter. Here we have a selector that will select which converter to be enabled, converter 1 or converter 2, according to uh, the speed, according to the reference current, and according to the actual current. So the selector which determines which converter to be operated, 1 or 2, according to the speed, reference current, and actual current. We need the actual current in order to switch between the converter at the zero current so that circulating current uh, inside the converters is not allowed. So converters switch only when the current in the active converter is zero, circulating uh, current is not allowed, and only one uh, converter is on at a time. 